Hi, Joe here from willycottage.com. Um, back to basics videos again. And for this quarter, um, or should we say this term, because um, we are in the autumn term of the schools and the kids are all going back to school soon, yes? Well, hopefully, hopefully if the RAC doesn't affect your schools. Um, so yeah, anyway, Joe's gone on divergent again as usual. God. Back to basics, I'm going to be concentrating on getting you to blend in your own fibres. And I really, sometimes I'm like, oh, John, you're showing too much, too much. You'll end up losing business. So, oh, do you know what? What difference does it make? Um, I can show you how I do things my way. Other blenders have got their own different styles of doing things as well. Um, I use a variety of different techniques and I probably won't cover everything in my in my videos but i will show you how i do things to get certain effects now i am doing this and coinciding with my listings so whatever i do on here i will be doing um selling it on the website so each time i put one of these videos up um this week is drum carding the next installment will be on a blending board doing the exact same style of technique okay and with each one will come the bat like today but it will also come this isn't ready i've got to sort it out the exact same fibers put to one side for a blend set for a blend set okay so you can blend yourself at home either on your blending board or on your drum carder um so i do do quite a few of the blend sets and i'll show you what i've got ready for listing today monday um, and the videos will probably come out a little bit earlier than what you would normally get them as well because as I say, I'm filming them on the day that I get everything all blended up for the shop for the next day. So a picture will pop up in a minute. This one, this blend that I'm doing is called Slate Shale. And in Slate, you look at Slate and the stuff you get in your gardens, it is a bog standard blue, um, purple colour. Sometimes you can get greeny tones and it's all different areas of our country some of it's imported from china try and get if you're going to buy anything like that try and buy it from the uk we've got the biggest most beautiful slate suppliers in this country um so yeah so i'm going with slate shale and picture's going to pop up in a minute so you can see the color inspiration that i've got and why i've put these colors together is going to end up being a semi-solid gray tone but with hints of other colors throughout it okay so i'm using hand dyed corridor that i've done myself and it's got it is gray but it's got these hints of blues through it as well it's not a solid gray it's got different hints and shines and that's what i love about using um hand dyed wools in my row in my bats because it gives you versatility i can create a really solid colorway or i can create something that's going to have a dappling effect through it so you've got different shades of something and that's because i do when i'm blending i do try and think of a multitude of different fiber crafters the felters the landscape felters um needle felt in as well because a lot of people use these for creating animals and things like that when they're working with the on their projects so i try to incorporate a lot of my ha my hand dye products in my um my bats uh this one as well i have got this which has actually got some neppy bits in there as well but this is a hand dyed um tussa silk there we go that's hand dyed tussa silk in there so there's different shades it's not a complete solid but it's, it's great for what i need it for because of the different colors that you've probably seen in the picture there's a, a graphite gray on a merino i'm adding a little bling in it because my mind's thinking whales the slate quarries rain a bit of sparkle so there's a tiny bit of trilobal on this natural gray merino i've got a soft seal gray merino i'm adding in some blue very soft dusky blue bamboo and in that i've got this mixed blend and it's mulberry silk merino and sari silk in there as well because there's yeah it's sari silk and there's a faux there's a faux um cashmere in that fiber because of the green from the verdigris the moss it sits on them where i live and if i go down to was um, wasdale the hillside at the side of the lock i'm calling it a lock i'm scottish at the side of the lock or the water there is a gigantic 
mountain side that is all just slate shale and you can go up there and pick up loads of bags of it and nobody will be any the wiser because it's constant and there's lichen orange and lichen yellows and there's the greens up there from the heather that's trying to grow in between it and everything else there's loads of different colors so i like to if i'm being inspired by a picture i like to try and depict the little tones that are in there especially to say for my for my felting customers but then even for a spinner you're getting these lovely little pops of colors that are coming through your yarn so you've got something really really unique okay then you've got this dark gray natural merino just to bring the colors down a little bit and then i have got um a little bit of black bio nylon it's not a lot but there's enough there to um give a little bit of stretch if somebody wants to use this fiber for um this fiber for sock sock knitting um it's not a lot but then there's the merino as well in there and then last but not least is this merino and tussa silk blend which has got lots of different hues in there it's got these purples it's got lichen green in there it's got moss green it's got a hint of yellow it's got dashes of purple there's hints of maroon in it as well so all these colors are going to transform into this blended bat and as i say i've done a blend set to match it as well okay so i'm gonna get this all rigged up and we'll have a chat on the other side um i think what you need to do and it's, this is one of my tips is depending on how much will you want um if you want it for a project or you're just doing this to experiment with you want to weigh it all out because every drum carder like mine i've got a jumbo one but when i used to have my little standard ones which i started out my business on this one here's a jumbo carder and i can get approximately well obviously 100 grams on there easy um but i can get anything up to nearly 200 grams depending on the fiber and this is what you need to take consideration you might have been able to put um put say 150 on a jumbo 150 grams of a really fine merino on there and you're like oh i could still fit more on and you'll probably end up with about 200 grams but if you're using a corsa wool like a shetland or a corridale um or a cheviot or um a pinternares or a chilean wool uh well a chilean wool or a cormo the fibers are a little more bouncy rambler is exactly the same as well these fibers are a lot more bouncy um and they'll fill out the the blending board uh, your drum card and your blended board a lot quicker um so you won't get as much fiber on there so have a little experiment you can always take it off um, the raw fiber before you go off and dye it or whatever it is if it's a raw shetland or a raw corridale drum card on your machine and get a rough appro a approximation of how much you can it'll actually take before it starts to really struggle to take any more fiber on there um, i've got long tines on mine i've got a 72 dpi on my drum carder um I do have another one down there and when we get into it and we start doing about cleaning your board and maintaining your equipment I will change over my other board and we will do a blending session with like my Surrey Alpaca or something because it's a very fine fibre and that drum card down there is 120 TPI on there and it's a long times again I don't do the short ones I like the long times because obviously as a producer and seller I like to make sure that I'm I'm doing the big bats like that i'm you that i'm known for i'm not really known for doing 100 gram bats i'm known for doing at least 150 to 300 sometimes 400 grams i will put on the website now and again as a big bumper pack another note you want to make sure that you're aware of is if you're doing your blending for a project and i met i touched on this the other day there on my um live chat on instagram if you want a project now for instance if i've got 100 grams of fiber whether it's a roving or an art bat it doesn't really matter either way um, or if it's rolex if that's the way you go i find that once plied i end up with an approximate um just shy of 200 yards or just over 200 yards so if i want a project for a knitting pattern for my size i need at least um, 1000 say 1200 yards just for talk's sake then i know for every 100 grams i'm spinning up approximately 200 yards of um, yarn so in that estimation i'm going to need at least 600 grams of art bats so 600 gram bats or 
150 grams or whatever it is but i know that's what i need and then i'll add on an extra one so if you want to do a project you want to make sure that you you've got a good idea of what your scale is per 100 grams for spinning your yarn once plied um, unless you're doing it in singles if you're doing something for a shawl or something like that in singles then for me that's like 420 430 yards and the singles i can do that no problem but i always find that once i've plied up it all starts to really flump out um so yeah that's what you need to consider when you're doing that get yourself a set of digital scales kitchen scales that's all you really need and a little basket so you can put everything in it and weigh it all out and then i put them into little bundles little sets around my worktop so right that's one that's one that's one blend them up as they go along and then that's really all you need to do tips of the trade you see loves tips of the trade so i'm going to get on with this and i will catch you on the other side okay so i'm going to get my fibers together i'll tilt you down so you can see what i'm up to so this is how i start off all right there we go sorry sorry for the bouncing i do apologize i should have sorted this out first so i'll just stick me my card underneath there so I want to just, and while I'm put, just sorting all this out, I just want to think it through in my head how I want it to blend up. I don't want it as a, a gradient. I want it sort of a mixing, a mixing through. Um, so I'm getting splashes of colours throughout, and I'm gonna just split this. It's massively long. I'm going to split this in half, and then I'm going to split it in half again. So I end up with the basis that I'm going to be making four layers of blend. So each layer, one in between these, this will start first and then I'll put my colours on top and then I will um, create a four layer effect on my blend. So that's put to one side because if it's out of the way then it won't bother me. Then what I'll do with the black bio nylon is just split it into two and I'll put it on the first layer after the grey and or my hand dyed and I'll put it on the second to last layer or the third layer as well so it's in between it but not on every layer then i've got this light gray merino and i'm going to split this into four as well i'm going to split it in half and then i'm going to split it lengthways and i'm going to pop that on that side because i want that to start my blending layers then i have got this dark gray merino split it in half split it in half again and then split it in half again so I'm just going to plonk that there. Then I've got this hand dyed to the silk. And again, I'm just going to split them right down the middle through my fibres. And I will probably paint this on as I will the bamboo. So I'll split that in half and half and then half again. So these are my topping off fibres. And the same with this one. So I'm going to split that in half, but then I'm going to split it that way in half and then i've got four small pieces this one here oh and then i'm going to split it that way and i will probably put these in between the layers and spread it out and split this one again and then i've got the um the granite gray merino i'm going to split this in half split it in half again and then split it in half again but that's going to be on my normal layer of wheels and then this one is going to be a spread along i think is where my head's going with that and then i've got this black merino which i will split in half half again and half again and that's it i'm ready for now starting putting my colors on sometimes when i'm doing this i find that i seem to start off one way on the layer but when i get to the second light layer i'm like oh i think i'll change it up a bit it doesn't make no difference to how it looks but it's just how my brain's working when i'm putting it together as to what i think looks nicer so i'm just going to quickly open up these fibers on the corridale so it goes through the liquor and the drum carder properly and smoothly without jamming up Right, 
so what I'm going to do next is look at what colours I've got like my fours and then I've got my black so I've got these different shades of grey and black in there so I'm gonna I'm just gonna start from this side and I'm just gonna tilt the fibre so it starts to move across the drum carder and then I'm gonna do the same with the graphite but from the other side so uh, I don't really want it to be a gradient I want it to be a mix match of different colours and shades as I go along and then the same with this one and then this one I'll just paint on the back because I want it to go right away across then I'm going to get my mix with the mulberry silk and the faux um, cashmere in there and the sari silk spread that along And I've now decided I'm going to split the bio nylon because the green's really quite pronounced. And I'm going to put that on top. No, actually, I'll wait. I will put this on first the merino and tissue silk mixed colours. Calm that down a bit. Now I'm going to put the black bio nylon in just to calm that down again. And then I'm going to paint on my Tissa silk. And then my bamboo. There we go. And then I've got this little bit of natural grey merino with this iridescent. I don't know if you can see it, but it's an iridescent. There we go. Stellina that's in there there's not a lot of it but there's enough just to put a hint of sparkle in it and that is it that's all I'm going to do all the way through so I'm going to get on with this and I'll see you on the other side
so now it's getting to the end i've nearly finished with my fibers but you can see it's starting to struggle everything's starting to stick to the front liquor which means that my drum back drum is starting to say yeah i've had enough now i nearly fill up so i just use my my little hand carder just to i really need a new one look at the state of it i've had it for years um just to help pack these fibers down just to get the last of what i need on there okay there's areas where it'll quite happily take it and there's areas where it's not impressed whatsoever and i've got this black one on I'll go in this mixed blend of different fibres on there and I'll just literally peel it off the liquor and move it along the back drum to see where it catches there we go the merino and tissue silk it's a natural tissue silk that's in this merino mixed merino coloured blend Right, now I'm going to get a card of that again and give it a kick. And I'm not pressing hard, I'm just helping the fibres that stick up off the liquor to start coming off of the back drum. Oh. I've got a few more bits to go on. I've got this to go on now. The last of the bio nylon, just to bring that depth down a bit. And then the twist of silk to bring in some highlights. And the bamboo. Another dimension. And you spin it up, you get these little hints of bright and dusky one last card just to get this stamina blend pulled up okay take off doffer brush at the back or whatever it's called i call it the doffer brush and then i want to find this find where my on every drum you've got this seal and it's actually holds the two holds the card and cloth together and it's got a groove down the middle of it and you want to run your doffer or your pie your porcupine quill though i wouldn't use one of those on here i would only use a porcupine quill for cleaning um if i had one and I literally just use it like a pivot and gently pull up the fibres and go. Now, a lot of people will take this fibre off and just pull it off on one go. I don't, and there's a reason why I don't do that. I don't do that because a lot of the time I'm doing... Um, my stuff in advance for photography for listings on the website so i like to just for storage wise and for um putting them up on the shelves out of the way or whatever it is that i'm doing or if i'm doing christmas adverts i like to keep them all rolled up in what i call the troll roll so i grab the troll by its hair and i twist it in and i make it do the roly poly all the way down and i also find that it helps me clear any fibers off the board here if you find that you're leaving a lot of fibres behind, it's probably because you've not carded your, um, brushed your fibres into the tines enough when you've been carding it. Especially if you haven't got one of these on the back, you definitely need to. On the first layer, you want to just give it a quick, gentle card down. Second layer, for definite, you definitely need to do it on that. And third, you will start to feel like you need to card it to pack those fibres in. And it'll help keep it clearer on your drum carder afterwards so i just do the troll roly-poly all the way down 
and there's still remnants of fibers on the back here but they'll pick them up a bit like a velcro um well pick them up like velcro as i'm rolling it down and now i have a completely clean back drum my lick is a little bit still little bits and pieces on it but not a lot and it means i can carry on with the next job right so now we've got the finished piece and this is how i store my bats until i'm ready to either get them listed on the website or if i'm doing customer orders or something until i'm ready to get them all packed up and in their bags and in the parcels they all get stored like this on on my shelves or in a box out the way and then i just find the weakest spot which is the bit that you've just peeled it off and i will gently tease the fibers back to open up the bat and there we go that is what it looks like once it comes off from that point then i will fold it in half i want to just get that other piece i need to fold this piece in as well and I fold it over and then I tease it out a little bit. Let me just move my stuff out of the way, make myself some room. Now you can work with it straight from here, but if I'm using it for my packaging, I, I like to tease them out because I'm going to do my photos in a minute and I will tease them out, stretch them out, and then you end up. I'm not going to do them yet because I need to take photos of this, but that there is your slate shale art bat which you'll see the pictures pop up in a sec there we go so as i say there is actually so there's the colors in the slate shale so that's to one side for now in this bag is the exact same fibers just a little bit less weight um and they'll be on the website you'll find them either just on the main page in the listings or you can find the blend sets in the drop down menu on the right hand side of the screen up the top. There's a drop down, there's a menu. Click on that and it will drop down with my categories and different pages. And in there you should find blend sets or blend your own sets and rovings. And that's where you'll find these. If you can't, drop me a message. I've got others on the website already. They've been there for a little while. Um, but come over with me and I'll show you what other blend sets that I'm putting onto the website today. Right, so today I have got, as well as the one that I've just done a demo for, which will be going on the website, I have got this one, which is called Surfer's Cove, okay? And it's got moss, lichen, into these teals and a turquoise with hints of orange in there. And there's a blend set that matches it, okay? You see that? So it's got all the fibres that I used in this made into a mini version. So you can have a go yourself at home and in this one there is hand dyed merino with flax and silk blend um it's got merino in there as well it has got stellina merino blend um hand dyed faux um angora which i've done myself and it's also got um, a merino viscose and wool blend um yeah so that's what's in there so all those fibers there's the faux Angora and there's another one in teal as well. There's just a silk in there and then you've got these deep mallards uh, The mossy greens and woodland green. There's a, a soft dusty teal in there and they all go well and that Potentially is what you can make with it So that's surface cove and The next one I've got is called starry night This one So starry night and I'll show you the bag in a minute, is hand-dyed 21 count merino, micron count merino. Oh, God, you're over there somewhere. Um, with a black, deep purple and mid-purple with violet on a merino base. It's also got D-head black baby alpaca in there with three colours of Angelina, hand-dyed llama um, with... Yeah, hand-dyed llama, wool and viscose and bamboo, which is in purple and this gorgeous bright yellow. So maybe think of the, the, the painting Starry Night. So that is the pack that it comes with. And 
you've got it starts off with this mauvey pinky color and goes into these purples and finishes off with a black on the roving now these have actually all got their own rovings there's 100 grams left from doing these sets so the bats the roving uh, the bats the sets and the rovings are all listed on the website and they've all got the same name so if you wanted to buy whatever to match with each other or to bulk out your blend your own set use the roving that matches it and you can make it go a little bit further so that is the pack for Starry Night. Okay, so that's that one. And the different coloured Evangelinas are down the bottom. There's violet, um, sugar plum pink and silver that I've used in that. And then from that one, on the last of these blend sets and bats and roving sets that I've got going, is this one, which is called Summer Fling. Isn't that so pretty? So it's a gradient, so it is a gradient blend that's in there and it goes from, where's the roving for it? There we go. This is the roving that's listed that goes with it. So it starts off with this really soft peppermint into a yellow, then onto an orange, into a peach and into a purple, peachy pink purple. So that's what's been used in there. There we go, back up there. So there's a, one of those available to go with these if you want to pair it up. And you've got that and there in this is a hand dyed Coradale and then I've used Coradale dyed already with a Merino Silk Blend, a Tussa Silk, Bamboo, Tweedy Viscose. So that's Summer Fling and this is the blend set that goes with it. So it's one of those rovings and what I do is I get the roving, I split it in half and I use the larger half for doing the bat and then the smaller half, which is roughly about 45 grams or 50 grams and then I mix it up with all these colours that are in there. So you've got this duck egg blue, you've got pink from Tussa Silk in there, you've got bamboo, um, you, that's the merino um, silk blend. Um, there's Coradale in there. So there we go. So I hope you found this video useful. There will be um, more coming along next week, not next week, the next one I will do on a blending board and I will do an, again some sets with those blend sets which it could end up being instead of rovings it could be um, blend sets with roll legs and I may do an art back to go with those so that you can pair them up as well so it could end up being like that every fortnight and they always do my listings to come on a Sunday or a Monday depending on what's going on um, if you go onto the website up until the 5th 14th of September which is Thursday um, I'm doing free posts for UK customers and for both you, so literally just type in in large letters, free post, and any orders over £10 will automatically get free post, and I'll get po popped out in the post the next working day. Um, if you place your orders, whether you're worldwide or UK, before usually six, seven o'clock, um, say seven at the latest. <laughs> It all depends because, to be fair, sometimes I say six o'clock and I'll get a couple of orders and eight and I'll go off and pack them up before I go to bed and they're ready for posting the next day, you see. It's what's, what's handy about working where you live. Not always a good idea. Um, so, yeah, if you get your orders in for 7 p.m., every day of the week, um, by the weekends, I will guarantee next day postage. I say next day postage on a Friday. Sometimes I do because it should be next working day. Sometimes I do pop them in, but it all depends on what my cat, what I'm up to, um, as in like work wise, um, or if I'm just taking some time out. But generally on a Friday, I do get it posted out the next working day, uh, the next working day, not always on a Saturday morning. Um, so yeah, so remember free post at cart, and it will get you free post. UK orders, you automatically get free post anyway um, on orders over £40. And if I generally, um, if I get orders over £40 and they're about 70, 80, 90 quid's worth, I do actually upgrade it to 48 hours tracked, okay, out of my own pocket. So I always make sure, because it's such a big order, that it's looked after and that you will get it. And it's been, it's been spotted all the way through, so it shouldn't go missing. Um, Overseas orders and UK, every orders throughout the month of September are getting 50 grams of my hand dyed locks put into your order free, gratis, um, as a thank you for sticking with me and supporting me over the last, uh, over the summer months to be fair, and um, bearing with me while I wasn't around, I took a hiatus over August. So there we go. So free post for UK customers, add free post in capital letters, and all orders UK and worldwide will be given. Uh, 
50 grams of locks, hand dyed locks. It may be BFLs, it may be um, Wednesdaydales, maybe Teeswater, maybe BFL Cotswolds that are put into there. Uh, but you won't be charged any extra that will be going in with your order as well and if it does bump up the price of your postage i'll cover it don't worry no problems right so i'll see you again in a fortnight i will see you next wednesday probably for a live chat as well um might do a demo we'll see how what i'm up to and where i'm at right take care of yourselves be good remember enjoy what you do um don't listen to those stalwarts out there that say you can't do this and you can't mix this. I will tell you now when you're blending, bamboo does not blend uh, if you use it for felting. Bamboo does not blend, but if you mix it in through an art bat and the wool fibres will help keep it in there when you're felting with it. And also if you're felting your art bats as well. Bio nylon and nylon, they don't they don't felt, not on their own. But I find that if it's trapped inside the wool fibres that do really felt, then you shouldn't have a problem at all. There's no point picking them out because the strands should be there forever trying to pick them out. But you, it, on their own, they won't ble they won't needle felt or wet felt. But as a blended item, you'll not notice when you're blending them in because the wool will just trap them in there anyway. Right, I've got to go. Take care of yourselves. Be good. If you can't be good, don't get caught. See you soon. Bye.